get everything at Lowe's, even a husband. Hey everybody, it's Becky. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be answering your questions that I did a call for questions about, I don't know, I'm kind of embarrassed to say it's been about two months ago. But I'm getting around to answering those and I'm sorry it took me so long, but I wanted to get some other stuff up for you guys first. But I was really excited to answer these questions because you always ask, you all you guys always ask such good questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and try not to have this video be too long. The first question is, what made you start your YouTube channel and do you earn income off of your channel yet? I started my channel, I think it was back in 2013, and back then my life was a little bit different. I had a kid that was in public school. Of course, now we homeschool both kids, so that was a little bit different. Um, and I really wanted to make a couponing and money saving channel. And I did that for a little while, but I kind of mixed in other videos here and there. And it just got to the point where it was really hard to find time to film. I had a much younger, smaller child. The oldest daughter was in public school. And so I was kind of here and there in the car and I would do a lot of videos in the car while I was waiting in carpool. Um, but then I eventually ran out of things to talk about with couponing and saving money. And I, I, so I quit making videos for that reason. Plus, you know, it's discouraging in the beginning when you start a YouTube channel and there's hardly anybody watching your videos and it gets really discouraging. So for all those things combined, I took a little break and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. But I kept telling my husband, I really miss making YouTube videos. And he's like, well then do it again. And I said, well, what am I gonna talk about? And so right around that time, not long after that, we actually started homeschooling um, our oldest daughter. Our youngest wasn't ready for school age. She wasn't school age yet. But we started homeschooling our oldest daughter and all of a sudden I had homeschooling videos and things to talk about like what furniture we got for the homeschool room and what curriculum we chose for her. And so little by little videos like that would trickle in and I would make those. And for a while I wasn't in the videos. It was just me kind of filming this or filming that, you know, of the room and things like that. And then eventually I started thinking of other things that I wanted to share and my life started changing in a lot of other ways. I started to, uh, I started my weight loss journey. So I had videos about that and I started different things. All these different things in my life changed and really helped me to see that I had a lot more to share than I thought I did. And so in addition to homeschooling videos now, of course I make fitness videos and organizational videos and cleaning videos and Disney videos. Anything that I think most moms would be interested in, I think my channel has a little bit of everything. And so, that's why I started a channel because I really love the creative outlet of it. I really love planning for what videos I wanted to share. And plus I've always kind of been a natural born teacher. Um, not that I'm the best at it and that I always know everything about everything, but I've always wanted, I've always enjoyed sharing things with other people. I've kind of always been a mother figure to everybody and even like my friends that are my age, I still kind of mother them. And so in a way, my YouTube channel is a, is a version of my mothering because I'm sharing with you guys uh, my experiences and how I do things and how things work for me or don't work. And so I really love that. And it's been a really great place for me to share that and share those aspects of my life and share my personality and things that interest me that also interest so many of you guys. So that's why I started my channel and that's why I have continued to make videos now for the past couple of years. When I started making money was much later. I didn't start making any money off of YouTube until I think the beginning of 2016. I mean, it took a long time because with YouTube, you have to make a $100 minimum threshold before they will pay you anything. And so even though there was a tiny little bit of money here and there every month um, in my AdSense account, which AdSense is how you get paid through YouTube, um, there was not $100. It took me... A long time to make a hundred dollars and I, I think I hit it the, the uh, beginning of 2016. So 2016 was the first year I actually made any money off of YouTube whether AdSense is concerned. Um, a little bit into 2016 I actually got a, a few sponsored video opportunities that I just kind of fell into my lap and they actually emailed me. I did those and I made money with those as well. Um, so definitely 2016 was a much was a was a was a great year because my channel grew so much in 2016 but also i started to actually see benefits of having a channel besides sharing with you guys i also had the monetary issue which was exciting and so that's been a really great addition to my youtube experience and the next question is have you ever been on a disney cruise do you ever plan on getting a timeshare since you visit disney very often and what is the best planning method to get the best price on a disney vacation um I have never been on a Disney cruise. I'm afraid of water. I don't really know that I would enjoy a Disney cruise because I'm kind of control freak and I want to be able to move around, do what I want. 
Um, so I don't know that I would ever go on one unless they set me on one somehow. Like a, I know they have a social media moms kind of thing where they do have trips sometimes that they offer. So if they offered me a trip on a Disney cruise, I would do it. But it's not something that I would probably do on my own. Um, we probably won't ever get a timeshare either just because we do usually only go once a year and I just really like to stay at Riverside, which is where we always stay. And I wouldn't want to give that up for a Disney timeshare. Uh, the best planning method to get the best price on a Disney vacation. I've, I've said this before, but I really recommend going to mousesavers.com and signing up for their free newsletter because every 15th of the month they will send out every coupon and discount that's available for a Disney vacation. So whether it be park tickets or a package discount for your entire stay on your resort, your dining and your tickets, whatever it is, any type of Disney discount will be in that newsletter. So that is my number one tip for anybody that wants to plan a Disney vacation and they want to save some money is to get definitely, down, definitely subscribe for that newsletter and read it every month to see what the specials are. So the next question is, what is my husband's occupation? He is actually in the car business. He has been in the car business now for I think almost 11 years. He started out in car sales and he has worked his way up to management. So that's what he does. And they also ask, how far is Panera from your house? I've mentioned before we go to Panera pretty much every day for lunch. And the one we go to is about five or 10 minutes from our house. So it's a really quick trip. We usually do homeschooling in the morning. And then when we're done, we will go to Panera and have lunch. And by the time we get back, you know, it's time to start with chores and whatever else we want to do for the day. But we like to get out and see people that we know. And since we go there so often, We've made friends with quite a few people that work there, and so it's nice to see them and get to visit and see other people. Uh, the next question is, what's your guilty pleasure and how did you meet your husband? Okay, my guilty pleasure, I have a couple of them, but my I guess the goofiest one that I do is I, I still like teenager music. I still listen to the Backstreet Boys and Britney Spears, and I still like even new teenager music, like the, the kids from the Austin and Alley Disney TV show. I like the music from that, and I would, I would have no problem listening to that whenever the kids weren't around. I just, I don't know, I have a very juvenile attitude towards life and I kind of have a juvenile taste when it comes to music and things like that. So I kind of think that's kind of an embarrassing thing that, that I enjoy. A couple other guilty pleasures of mine are Disney World and Panera, especially Panera because even though it's not as expensive as Disney World, I go there way too much. It's embarrassing. Like sometimes I'm even embarrassed for people to know that we went there again. And so I like try to hurry up and, and like, I will eat and go back home and try to pretend like we weren't there, you know, just because I don't want people to know that I have a Panera problem. Same thing with Disney World. I mean, I think about it every single day and it's embarrassing because I am a grown up and I should not be so crazy, crazy cuckoo over Disney World, but I just am and it makes me happy. And that's like the highlight of my year every year is to go to Disney World, so. Those are my guilty pleasures. And how did I meet my husband? He actually was working at Lowe's when my parents were building the house they live in now. And so we were, I, li I still lived at home with my parents. So we were constantly going to Lowe's looking for like ceiling fans and rope lighting and whatever you look for when you're bu building a house. And since he worked at Lowe's, they had already met him and he had already helped them pick out some stuff for the house when I wasn't there. Well, then one day she was like, my mom was like, there's this really cute guy that works there and he's really nice and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, whatever. So I went there anyway. So the next time I went with them, she's like, you know, there's the guy I was telling you about. And I thought that he looked too, I thought he looked old. Like he looked like he was in his thirties and I was, I think 19. No, I was like 21, I think. And so we started, he kept trying to talk to me, but my hair was dirty. So I kept leaving the aisle that he was in to try to avoid him. But he kept following me anyway and talking to me. We got to talking and everything. And I um, had told him I had just gotten a job that I was going to be starting the next day and working at the mall, like right next to the Lowe's he worked at. And I told him where I was going to be working. Well, then the next time I was at work, he showed up and stood there and talked to me for like two hours. And so that's kind of how that began. And so now when we go to Lowe's, I always say, see, you can get everything at Lowe's, even a husband. My next question, the next question is, what would your perfect day look like? I, my perfect day would just be a day when everybody is healthy and getting along. The two of those things coinciding in itself would be a miracle. That everybody feels good, nobody has a headache, nobody's stomach hurts, and everybody is getting along and being nice to each other and I don't have to play referee between anybody. That would be awesome. If you added in like some day of fun for the family or like a trip to Disney, that would be nice. But just in general, getting along, having fun, everybody being in a good mood so we can all enjoy being together. What do you hope or imagine the next five years will look like for you? In five years, I would like to be in a different house. Not that I don't like this house, but it, it could stand to be, you know, we need some more closet space and I really, 
I would like to move into the house that we maybe hopefully will live in forever so that we can still have time to make memories in the house with our kids while they're still young. So I would like to have moved in five years. I would like to, um, I would like to really have furthered my YouTube channel and had many more opportunities than I even have had already. Um, just to work with some amazing companies and different things like that because I really do love YouTube. It is my passion and I really would love to further my opportunities with YouTube. Of course, I would love to further my relationship with God and Jesus and just our family relationship. You know, have a closer relationship with my husband and of course in five years I will have a 17 and 11 year old so I would like to be as close to them as possible and be best friends just like my mom and I were when I was growing up. The next question is, what is God teaching you right now? I think that he is trying to remind me to make time for prayer. I get busy and I will fall asleep before I finish my prayers. Or if I have to get up in the morning and I don't have time to say them in the morning, then I'll just kind of skim over them. And I am not making enough time for my prayers. And so I think that is what he's trying to work on me with me for right now. Favorite Disney movie? That's really hard because I like so many but I wouldn't necessarily like just sit down and watch them to be watching them. I mean, as far as the kids' version of Disney movies, I really like Tangled. I think that's one of my favorites. Um, growing up, I loved Lady and the Tramp, and I loved The Little Mermaid. Um, Beauty and the Beast is another good one. But as far as now goes, I really like Maleficent. I think that's a really good one. I love how they twisted the story um, because, you know, you hate her so much in Sleeping Beauty, and then you see this other story, and you're like, wow, you know, her story is really amazing. So I love that movie. Favorite Disney ride? I have a couple and they're very polar opposites of each other. Living with the Land Boat Ride in Epcot, which is like a slow boat ride about food. And then on the other side of the spectrum, Rock and Roller Coaster is another one of my favorite rides. I think those two together, you feel like if you don't ride those when you're at Disney, then your trip is not complete. Least favorite Disney ride? I have a couple of those too. Haunted Mansion, I have not ridden in probably 15 years, but I think it's boring and I don't like it. Um, the Hall of Presidents isn't really a ride, but it's, again, it's boring and it's something that your parents drag you to when you go there and you hate it. And then also the Carousel of Progress, I do not like that one either. I know it's like an original Disney created ride. It's like something that he imagined himself, but I just think it's boring. I also got a couple of questions about a makeup tutorial. I know that people have, people have been asking me that. For quite a while to do a makeup tutorial and I'm just afraid because I've never done one before and I don't feel like that anything I do is that out of the ordinary um, or even that great for that matter but I know that a lot of you guys have asked for that so when I get up enough nerve and I can figure out the right way to film it in my bathroom where I get ready then I will try to do a makeup tutorial for you guys. Okay so these next questions are just some fun ones that I found online that I thought would be fun to answer and share with you guys. So the next one is, if money was no object, what would you do all day? And that answer is easy. I would travel. I really am annoyed by the fact that we don't get to go as many places as we want to go in our lives because of money and or having to have a job. Now, I have the benefit of not having to work outside of my home, but I don't have enough money to travel to all these places that I would love to see. And it's just sad to think that in my lifetime, you know, and in the grand scheme of things, it's not a very long lifetime that I'm not going to get to see even a fraction of all the amazing and beautiful places there are out there. So I would definitely travel if I could. And where do you want to travel? So I would want to go to definitely, I mean, I want to go to plenty of places. There's lots of places in the United States that I would like to go. I want to go to New York City and things like that. But I would also love to go to Ireland, Italy, and France. I think those are like my dream places to go if I could. Uh, what is your favorite memory? I think pretty much any memory of Christmas time growing up was a favorite memory. My parents made Christmas really special for us and it was always fun to do like get the tree out. It was always a big deal whenever we got the tree and all the ornaments and decorations out for Christmas and it was just such a cozy time and so when I think back on my childhood a lot of times most of my happiest memories were around Christmas time. What was your favorite activity in gym class? I will tell you a little, a little known secret about me. I was a PE flunky. I had PE my senior year of high school and I did not want to sweat because it was like, I don't know, second or third hour and I wore makeup and so I didn't want to get all sweaty and plus I'm a spaz so like I can't do anything athletic at all anyway. But I'm the type of kid that would probably score for the other team. But I didn't want to sweat in school and then have to go out the rest of the day and like be all gross. And I didn't want to take a shower in the locker room. So a lot of times I would just not wear like your uniform that you had to wear. And so then you automatically had to sit out of PE. I did that so many times that by the time the end of the year rolled around, I had an F. 
and I had to beg the teacher to give me a D so that I could pass and graduate because I was a senior. So that's an embarrassing story. I'm not athletic at all and I don't like to sweat profusely in public. So that is why I did not do very good in PE. The next question is, what is one thing you think should be taught in school that isn't already? I think in homeschool or public school, whatever the situation may be, logic and reasoning skills are super important because it's great to know all this stuff, but if you have no common sense, then that's really what you need to get you through life. And I think that's something that's not taught enough in any school environment and also financial planning. I think it's super important that kids be prepared for the real world of finances with credit and interest and checking and knowing how to balance your checkbook and knowing how to save money and knowing how to spend money. I think all those are really important skills that you see so many adults struggling with now because they may not have received enough education about it when they were younger. So at least give them the tools they need to make the right decisions and then let the, you know, the chips fall where they may. But giving them that information that they need early on I think is really important for life skills they're going to need later on in the future. So the next question is what does your life say about you? I, and I've mentioned this before too and I think it's important for people, I want people to know by talking to me or watching my actions that I'm a Christian. That's another thing I think is really important that you can, that people can tell you're a Christian without you having to say a word. You don't have to wear a t-shirt that says I'm a Christian. They can tell by the way that you act with other people. They can tell by the way you present yourself. They can tell by the language that you choose not to use or by the situations that you choose not to put yourself in. I think that's something else too that my life says about me because you will not hear me cursing. You will not see me in places that I shouldn't be at. I shouldn't be. Um, and I think you'll see me as an everyday um, doing everything that I can for my kids and my family. Trying to take care of the house and do things for homeschooling and even in a way, fitness is, is, it's for me too. I'm not going to say it's not for me because it is for me, but it's also, you know, setting an example for my kids that this is important, that you can make time for yourself. You are a priority and your health is a priority and you are taking care of the body that God gave you. So all those things I think are what my life says about me. It says that my family is a very top priority for me. My faith is a top priority for me and myself. I am a priority for me because I make time to exercise almost every day and that my YouTube channel, I make time for that because that is something that I love. It's a hobby that I have started and didn't know I was gonna love, but I do love it and it's fulfilling and it's amazing and it's so much fun. And so those things I think are a representation of what my life what my life is and what I want my life to say, you know, to be for other people to see. The last question is, how would your how would your friends describe you? I think my friends, the ones that really know me, um, would describe me as funny and fun-loving and childlike, and not childlike in a bad way. I mean, I think being childlike is actually a good thing as long as you have ma the maturity to go with it and you make good decisions. But as far as I mean, with childlike, I mean like that you enjoy the little things in life. You are happy with small things and big things. And I think that's a really important characteristic to have because if you're only happy when life is like exciting and a bunch of good, great big stuff is going on, then you're not gonna be happy very often. You have to find happiness in everyday little mundane things. And so for me, it's like birds and squirrels and crickets singing at night when the summertime and just little things like that that you can find that you enjoy every day and seeing the whimsy and the seeing the joy and all those little things I think is a really it's a great characteristics that kids tend to have and it's also something that I have and I think that's a great a great quality and I also think my not funny jokes are funny so many times I tell these amazing jokes and like my husband doesn't think they're funny or my kids are like that's not funny it's funny it's really clever I have a very clever sense of humor it's just nobody else knows it so I think that's funny and I think my friends would say that I have a good sense of humor. I like to laugh and I like to laugh at myself and I think that's what they would say about me. Now I don't know if you meet one of my friends out there then you can ask them and maybe they'll say she's a jerk and I don't like her. But otherwise I think that's what they would say about me. So I hope that I answered all your questions. I know I skipped a couple of the ones that were about Christmas because I am late on getting this video done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned a little bit more about me and a little bit and that you got an answer to your question. So thank you to everybody that asked. If you have any more questions and you want to know anything else then leave them in the comments below and I will answer them at some point in a future video or um, sometimes people ask video, ask questions that are actually their own video in itself. So it might be something I end up doing an entire video about just depending on what the question is. 
Usually that tends to be Disney questions. I get a lot of Disney questions and um, I do a Disney series on my channel every year. Um, so that is actually coming up here in May. So be on the lookout for that. I'm already planning videos for that and I'm super excited. But make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and I will see you in the next video. Bye.